Nice. <laughs> sink and pull the weight over the leg you want to attack. In this case, it's the forward leg. So I'm going to sink and I'm going to steer with my elbow on the other one. Right. So, don't, don't die too So, you might even pull this out a little bit, right? As you sink and you steer and you see like he wants to, the idea is I'm trying to bend him back. And if he doesn't, can you go for, uh, Knee strike. The idea is get his weight on the leg, right? yeah. and then change your posture with this one. As you hook that leg to the front. Uh, if you end up like an underhook overhook, that's still fine too. The idea is still the same. Pull the weight, but now because I'm not on his head, I don't have the elbow leverage. I may have to extend this and then get behind his leg. If the leg I want to attack is back uh, away, yeah, then just take a step, like circle away from that leg so it comes to you. And then same. Like a side flange. T-bone, T-bone. Right. So, so to set this up, you're going to rise up, cinch in, and press down with your head and shoulders on this upper body and start breaking them down. Uh, this works, I find works best if their base is somewhat wide. If you get there, take a small step that's in the center of the gravity, right? And then the other foot, you hook cap to cap and pull, and I mean really pull. Pull it up, turn and then let your foot come back down because you're going to drive him down with your upper body. You just remove one of his pil pillars and drop him. You can control the legs and worry about kicking the other one. <coughs> so however you got in there, and a lot of times you can get to this position, you can hold for a minute because he might be struggling. That's Take But it's, it's not a kick necessarily. And the idea, the feeling is you kind of pick that foot up and turn. Right? If you don't turn, if you just pick it up, put it back down, he'll have his balance back. So it's like a, you're making him do like a yoga nagari. Right? You get him going, and you take the pillar out and circle it away from where his center of gravity is going to go. And so he falls. So give that one a try. Right? So let's say his base is kind of narrow. Like maybe he's, and some people they're just so nervous they get stiff and they get stiff leg. Like they'll stand up basically. This is a little bit easier. So the problem here is if I try to just hook him, he'll probably just step out of it. Like I won't be able to get enough action. So. The setup for the balance is the same. Rise up, press down. And you drive with your head and your shoulders just like before, but now take this knee, bend his knee, and he can't stand up, and you drive him there. You just fold his leg and drop. This one's pretty simple. So you get T-bone, take the balance, find his leg, collapse it as you sink, and then just drop him. If he holds on to you, he pulls you into the into mount on top of him. So that one's probably a little bit easier. So if you get a guy and you like, these are two that you can connect together that if you try this and it doesn't work and he winds his base out as a reaction, well now that you hook and vice versa. If he's, so why you try to hook him and it doesn't work and he kind of gets narrow, well then you collapse the knee and drive him down that way. So it's like a combination if necessary. Anyway, indicator is his base is Somewhat narrow, collapsing, break, you know, bend his knee so it's hard for him to maintain his own weight. And just use your body to drive him down, drop him. Let's say you get here, I should dry, like, or let's say you get like a home guy. And it sucks. Uh, sorry, maybe not that bad. 
to get here, and then you have his upper body and you take his foot to throw. I should probably just like leg sweep or foot sweep. So whatever position you might end up in, you've got him low like this, you can press his body out and take the foot out. All right. So that's kind of from the outside. A little bit funkier is like say I've got, you know, he's trying to grab me. And I've got some inside control here on his, on his upper body. I've got this. So as I go, I'm going to tug down this and push, kind of corkscrew him a little bit. And basically block his foot. And try to throw. That one's the harder one to do. Because the timing is uh, a little bit more difficult. So here... I decided to go, I had to really push and tug. Oh, you all right? Yeah. When the time's right, it's okay. <laughs> but you're not like pushing, you're basically blocking this from moving as you steer him. So he can't take the step he would need to catch his balance. So it's almost like doing Tachinagare, like we used to do if they punch you. You touch Tachinagare and do the roll. It's like that, but you know, whatever side, let go this way. I'm covering him on this side. I've got an underhook this way. Take a quarter turn. Right? Pull this down, push this around. So you kind of like cork, sort of corkscrew it. And then block the, the, the leg that you're going towards. And go. And you're kind of like opening yourself. Like your spine up. Right. Play with it. It's, it's a little difficult. And then you can also try the ones where you've got them low and wide, they're base wide. You pull their, basically you're trying to pull their hips back. And you take your foot. And you go back. Okay. Play with some foot on it. Both directions, because then that way if there's a splinter you can tell. And maybe you want to like not use it or set it aside because it needs some work like this one needs some work because we beat it up with uh, jute last time but it's not so bad it's dangerous no it's like safety things if you were training clack sore you know, clack both in together and you hear like a strange sound check for cracks because one like some of the old ones like Maybe like that one. No, that's my good one. Uh, oh, like this one. So I think this one was bought from like AWMA. They don't make very good bokeh. So occasionally we've been trained to hear a string sound and you check and it's starting to have a major crack and you want to get rid of it beforehand because these typically when they break, they break in long shards. So if you're in the middle of technique and he's like stabbing you, it and it breaks off the end, the other end may still go into you. So <coughs> that's important. Uh, so grip, basic grip, you know, circle around. Right hands forward, if you've got a suba, you've got about a uh, finger width from the suba. Um, the idea is that the web of your thumb goes over the top. And you should be able to hold it between your forefinger and the edge of your palm. Not through tension, but because of leverage, because you're in the right position. If you're doing this and you're having to cheat, that's incorrect. It should be this part of the palm. Right? And then the same thing on the back is the basic tenoji. Tenoji is like grip. Or I guess I think it literally means inside the hand. Tenoji. Te is hand. That she is inside, so inside of the hand. So that's the, the basic idea with fundamental grip. And the back hand is near the end. Don't do the thing where people do the finger or the thumb, uh, sorry, the little finger off the end. You meet resistance like you're stabbing somebody, you might actually hurt your finger. Also, don't do what you often see is the fingers off the sword. That just means you have less surface on it, you've got a weaker grip, so keep your hands on it. <clears throat> uh, basic come on. So, say so it's Dai Jodan, so your feet are like Ichimonji, 
but a little bit like in Jesus and God H ones, you're kind of in this Hanmi thing. Sword, you're a little bit more narrow because you're probably fighting someone else with a weapon, so you want a thinner profile. So if I've got a line here, then I'm kind of pretty linear to that line. And Daijodon, left foot is forward. And you're up here. So it's not super high. It's still low, but I can still see, right? And your blade is at a 45 degree angle so that you don't accidentally hit your friend who's behind you. Right? So you don't do these type of things. That means you're stabbing the buddy behind you. So, Daijodan, uh, Sagan, but <coughs> you're the same. Except it's kind of from your hip. If you're doing this in front of you, this is incorrect. It's a bit more side. So position the rest of your body around the sword. So more narrow. Yeah. More narrow. Up one arrow. You are centered on the sword, which means you have to make yourself more angled. A little bit more. So, here. Not here. I'm still centered on the sword, but it's out of this, kind of the hip. It's not back into yourself. It's out a little bit. The Kisaki tip is kind of intersecting the line of sight between you and the opponent. So that's Sagan. So we got Daijodan, Sagan. Okay. Gaidon is the same thing except the sword is lower. Gaidon means low level. Uh, Chudan is just parallel with four but low. Something similar to this is Ichi no Kamai. Ichi is here. It's extended and it's flat. Uh, let's see. Hostile no command. The sword is almost like the suba is next to your temple. So it's not necessarily too low. And it's also not too high. It's just here. So let's see. Daijon, Sagan, Gaidan, Chudan, Ichi, Haso. That's what, six? So three more. Um, with it. Oh, you sweet. You, you sweet is it's kind of like a tail hanging behind. It's a little bit hidden, so I don't want it out where the opponent can see it. I want this where the, the distance or length of the sword is somewhat hidden from the opponent. Okay. That could be also the side if you need it to be. I mean, all these can kind of be either side if you have to have them that way. Sagan gets a little weird when you start doing it this way. It doesn't, it's not really that great. So you might do like a, like a uh, Shinkage Ryu type Sagan, which is sort of like this, or this. It's not a Fujikan school, but <coughs> another sword, sword school. Uh, Kocho no Kamai. So this kind of angles straight to the opponent, kind of down the forearm. And that can be either side as well. Uh, there is um, Kasumi no Kamai. This is here. And it can be also either side. On this one, the blade is over your head, not here. You want blade protecting your head. Uh, there's, I think it's Tenchi, Tenchi no Kamai? No. Congo no Kamai? I can't remember. It's more like a, this. It's weird. <coughs> Those are some of the basic con. There's, pro, there's others that I, that we didn't do. Like Jizuri Gaidan, it's this one. It's Gaidan except the other side. Anyway, the idea, like when you do live cutting, is you want the sword to travel in a straight line, whether you're going 
straight down, going at an angle, going at the other angle, sideways, or horizontal rather, going up, going up. You don't want curvature. And you don't want the sword to do this when you're cutting. Because that'll make it, it won't, it won't travel along the most efficient line to cut. Definitely see this when you do to Michigan, which I'm gonna try to do some of that this year. Maybe we'll, or to Tommy, or at the very least, we'll get a bunch of pull needles and practice with that. But the idea is a straight line. So for a vertical cut, <clears throat> you're kind of leading with the sword first and let your body follow. What a lot of people say is step and cut, but if I do that and I'm facing another guy with a sword, I'm very open this whole time until I cut. So it's not this, you, you attack with the sword the same way you punch, right? You lead to make it safe and, and your body gets pulled by the sword. It's so like with a punch, you're not just going here, you're entering safely with the forehand to figure out what you need to do, right? So, try that a few times. That'll be our attack for the night. You have to think of it, so like the sword is curved, right? The curvature of the sword is what actually makes it efficient at cutting. Because once you hit a target, just the motion of it pushing a little bit through the swing makes it slide along the blade, which cuts, right? So when people talk about push cutting, that's really what that means. So you're cutting with the proper part of the sword. When it hits the target, there's gonna be a little bit of a push and now it bends and it'll naturally go along the edge and get cut. Like you take a sharp sword and just press straight and it probably won't cut you. Like that's a trick that, like a little part of a trick that I sense they will sometimes play with. So you go, oh, it doesn't cut. And he's like, you have to see that it's a trick. If you do that, you get cut. <laughs> it's like the whole, uh, the Shaolin Monk trick with the spear in the throat and you're like using the chi and you stop it and you see the spear bends, and it's like, whoa, they're so strong. It's because all the pressure's at the bend. There's nothing going into them, it's pressing flat. If the person put that there and just went twisty, then they'd go through them. All right, so you can't be fooled by like, these tricks. So, so you have this push cut, the way to make the curvature work for you is you get the sword extended a bit, like you're casting a fishing line. So that once, once you like, once you start to cut, your hands are pretty much, or your arms are pretty much extended before they reach horizontal. And of course, you don't do this. You just cut and stop. You know, basically like we're chewed on the be. because you might need to stab after that. Okay? It's this feeling of extending out. Like if you do a cut where you pull. You probably won't cut very well. So it's out. A couple more times. Inigashi is the name of it. Inigashi. So imagine you're in like Sagan. Uh, depends on which side it's going to cut. So, uh, so like here, if it goes cut, well, that's kind of foolish because <laughs> the sword's right there. So this is part of understanding the strategy. So, Dr. Jimmy? So he cuts, <coughs> and then there's distance. <laughs> Which is why you have to sink. If you lower yourself, you can stay in that same distance and still like lower. Now if you keep that low distance and take full stride, go ahead. <coughs> you actually get me. Right? So this is why you cannot be lazy. Can't practice tight suit and expect to be effective. You're just kind of standing around. It's like it just doesn't work that way. You got to be ready. You, especially with three foot long razor blades, there's a lot of distance you got to cover. So if you're in Sagan, others say correct Sagan. Generally speaking, whatever hand is forward, that foot is forward because that makes you longer. If I'm here, I can't get as far. <clears throat> on that side. Inches matter when there's razor blades. Right? So if I'm standing like this, I probably won't reach you. Right? 
not even your hands. From here, I get much more distance. Right. So, so anyway, go from Sagan Gaidon to open up to give him a chance. He cuts, and you shouldn't have to reach. So lower. Okay, and you can touch him. And he tests it. I can only see like to here. I can't actually see the tip. So. For the block, if he's cutting down, if I want to go this direction, I step off line that direction, okay? With the back foot. Raise this up so that the blade covers my head, not here. It's here. The angle is 45 degrees on the this plane, and also 45 degrees on this plane. All right, so it's not straight up and down. It's here so that this will slide off. Right? And then I can counter cut. If I want to go the other side, then I have to step with the lead foot. So don't step across because now my back's turning. So I'll step this way and the sword goes the same way. Blade right over the head. And I can get a counter cut. Try that. This shoulder being lead. And now basically my back is turning towards him. And I end up going perpendicular, which makes us probably both stop. And then it's equal. It's like, who knows what to do on the next cut? If he's smart, he'll just turn it across. Yeah, just right away. Right? If I do that and he cut and he blocks straight, if I'm cutting you and you block perpendicular. Boom, it's like, okay, what's the next thing? Come up through and cut the hands. All right, because once you both stop, then you can both start. And it's, it's almost too faster at that point. So I want him to overshoot. So if I leave with my shoulder, then I end up blocking straight. That's also what happens when you go the other way. I'm leaving my shoulder because I'm like, oh, shit, there's a sword. I end up stopping it more than anything. I want him to overshoot so that he's open when I count him, right? So when I, when I go this way, I'm like flat to him. I let this shoulder get. So that I can quickly come around. Right? Same on the other side. open up so that you have this open you can make it go okay so try it mind where your shoulder position is you know for the naysayers i guess it's a trilogy fucking bullshit uh, understand how much you need to move so if he's cutting me on this line and for you since you're the nearest and you actually gotta actually be able to hit me uh is how much do i need to move to not get cut any guesses Not much. So if he's doing a good proper cut, yeah. And for this one, you can go like through. Okay. Just so I know I'm like correcting my movement. That's it. So I'm trying to be mindful not to leave my arms out, or or worse, to only do this because now it cuts me. Right, this whole body. But I also am not doing this because now I got no control. Right? So just enough. You know, what we what we would do back in the old days is we would price against Bokem until they were going fast and we were trying like and don't go fast, I haven't done this in a while. And I don't trust you to throw it to cut straight. <laughs> is we would we would have them going fast and see if we could go and get them to brush our heat. It's like, and this is before I gained a lot of weight. It's back when I was still thin. And you'd hear like, or they hit the, the tassel in the belt. So it's a good drill for him to practice cutting straight. If he doesn't, he'll hurt me. 
and it's good practice for me to judge the correct distance. So grab partner, try this a few times. <laughs> 